All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Candid Christian Conversations. I'm so excited for us to be here. I'm excited for the show. And um, I apologize. We were having some technical difficulties, um, but I am happy to be here now. Um, we are here tonight um, relaunching uh, Candid Christian Conversations, which is a platform for Christian and non-Christian, married and single. Tonight's um, theme is From Adam to Eve. I'm so thankful for uh, the panel that we have on today. Uh, Bishop Designate John L. Woods, Senior, Pastor Josh Bingham, and Dr. Tuesday Tate. Amen. It, Go ahead and give our audience a quick hello. Hello, hello. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Good night. <laughs> Excited that you all joined us on today. I'm going to give you a little bit about our um, the panelists that we have on uh, with us on today. Um, I'm so thankful for uh, Bishop Designate <laughs> Jonathan L. Wood. He is uh, from rural Anniston, Alabama, a pastor, teacher, preacher, with a word always sitting in his belly. Bishop was called to the ministry in December of 2000. Uh, he has since traveled all over the world, delivering the good news of Christ. He was called to pastor just eight years later at Parks Hill Full Gospel Church, at, which has now become All Nations Church. Um, as of 2015, he is a well sought after speaker, state um, of Alabama overseer for the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship. He's revered, respected, and educated, prominent community leader. He, he is the husband of the beautiful Nicole Looney Woods and father to two beautiful children, Jada and Jonathan Jr. Welcome, Bishop Woods. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited uh, to be on tonight. Looking forward to the discussion. Glad to be on. I cannot wait. Next, we have a vision consultant, strategist, and life advisor. She goes by the name of Dr. Tuesday Tate. She is a powerful and dynamic, highly sought after coach. She has been blessed with multi gifts, including author publisher, radio, and TV talk show host on various platforms. She has a passion and has tilled the ground for relationships. Born in Benton Harbor, Michigan, holding a doctorate in theology, this youngest of six children is known for her real talk and no-nonsense style. Welcome, Dr. Tuesday Tate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Let's go. I'm excited about you being here. And last, but certainly not least on our panel, we have mandated, innovative, anointed, commissioned, and humble are some of the words used to describe this next panelist, Pastor Joshua Bingham. He is a servant leader, preacher, teacher, pastor, and mentor, writer, and soon-to-be author. So excited to have New Orleans own uh, Pastor Bingham on, who also received his uh, Bachelor's of Arts in Political Science from the University of New Orleans. He is certainly humble. He is approachable. He is uh, and is currently serving as the senior pastor for the Renaissance Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. Welcome, 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 Pastor Josh Bingham. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited for you all to be here. I'm excited even with the relaunch of Candid Christian Conversations with Dr. Tuesday. I initially uh, started this uh, platform on uh, a blog talk radio show and Dr. Tuesday was also my first guest when I launched from the radio show so I just thought it was be fitting thought it was be fitting for her to also join us and she has tools for the kingdom I promise you so we're gonna get right into this conversation it is themed from Adam to 
Eve, from Adam to Eve. Come on, Bishop, tell us who Adam was. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I guess I'm in the hot seat first, so I'll jump and dive <laughs> right in. I don't mind talking about Adam, of course, in my uh, estimation of who Adam was by way of um, identity, uh, by way of creation. I believe Adam was the the image or the personification of the mind of God as it relates to uh, what he had in mind when he thought to create man. Uh, I feel that Adam had all the tools necessary uh, to be everything that God wanted humanity to be. He is the father of humanity. Um, he is uh, everything that a man is supposed to be. And of course, we do know that Adam also is uh, the reason why mankind has so many complications today. Um, <laughs> in, in fulfilling his mandate. So uh, in my estimation, Adam is that dude. He is that man. Uh, that literally uh, laid the foundation uh, for humanity in, in terms of uh, the identity of man and the assignment of man. Okay, so I'm going to get started with this question. I'm going to throw this out there. We've gotten a lot of questions to my inbox, to my email, but I want to start off with this question. When God uh, decided to give Adam a helpmate, he did surgery on him, right? He yes. he. Did. Marked an incision, laid, went, had him go to sleep, put an incision in him, and then created Eve. But God did not wake Adam up until after he was already healed. What do you say, Pastor Josh, Bishop Wood, about men who have not healed but are searching for Eve? Wow. Wow, that's a... That's a that's a that's a that's a heavy question. <laughs> um, Come on with it. <laughs> you know, coming with the uh, let me gotta ah, I gotta give I gotta wake up. Um let me say let me say this. Um I think that's an interesting thing uh that uh, God actually places Adam to sleep to um remove out of him that which was in him. I think even before you get to the healing piece, you have to uh um look at um, the fact that, you know, she's Eve's take is taken away a, out of Adam and not from the perspective of just being an addition. But I mean, mm -hmm. she's literally a part of him, you know, and she's embodied in him. So when God removes that rib, he's literally removing it for the purpose so that it can be revealed back unto him. Right. So that's why when Adam sees her, he says, I'm calling you woman, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, because he's recognizing, you know, and the, the, the thing that they, why the healing is important uh, is because by being healed uh, by after he's going at, through, through the process, of God removing Eve from him, he's able to recognize and identify. I think as men, when we're not healed and we're not whole, um, our vision is off, our perspective is off. And we don't know how to identify uh, our ribs. You know, we don't know how to identify that which is part of us. So we go wow. picking, picking and trying to put pieces of this there and pieces of that there. And that rib doesn't fit and that rib doesn't fit because I have not been healed and whole enough to identify mm -hmm. that which is from me. You know, and it's, it's really a spiritual thing that when we are healed and whole, that man, Adam, can recognize. I, I believe mm -hmm. even more so than the woman. This is my personal perspective. I think that even the woman sometimes may have to, but as a man, because we were created first, I believe that when we are healed and when we are whole, that there is an ability to look and almost very quickly to identify that if this is not my rib, it's very, very close to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's very... You know, it's can you get close? Can you get close to it? Because, just closer, uh, just miss the mark just a little bit. Yeah, like, <laughs> but she's she's from him. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what right. I think we gotta. She's just not presented to Adam as God going on going in the clouds and and building this 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 created created woman. No, she's made from his DNA. She's made right. from his bone. She right. the cell, the cellular level, all of those things are consistent with him. So if he's healed and he's whole and he's walking in alignment with God, more importantly, he's able to look and identify that which is his. Those are my cells. 
Those are my, that's my makeup. Ooh. You're speaking my language. Yes. You fit me. <laughs> you fit where I'm going. You fit what? You fit my language. You fit, you know, everything that God has assigned to my life. You know, so that's what I think in, in the in the connection of, of how we got to be healed as men and whole because we're able to recognize our DNA. Able to recognize our DNA. Now, Bishop, in recognizing our DNA as the real, we're talking about Eve, right? Yes. And a, and a whole atom. We're talking about a whole atom. You know, the rib is the only, only bone in the body that can regenerate itself. Right. So how do you identify the right rib and not an imitation? Oh, <laughs> Lord. <I mean. laughs> now you're talking good. I mean, I think identification <laughs> is, is connected to my ability to see clearly. Um, it's not necessarily what I'm looking at as much as it is my ability to know what to look for. And, right. um, you know, when, when you talk about a healed Adam, you got to realize that God is the one who wounded him. And so right, now, that's good. was just as important that is, as a sickness because Adam in his original state is not ready to have an ease. So he has to become sick so he can learn uh, vulnerability. He can he can be placed in a place where he's seeking for something else, and uh, there has to be something missing in order for there to be a seeking. And so, uh, when when Adam wakes up and he's looking for his real, it's very important that um, as we have this candid conversation, we really stress we really stress the idea of not being too spiritual when you're looking mm -hmm. for. The and I know we are people of faith, and this is a very challenging uh, conversation because people of faith look for a revelation, an out-of-body experience, uh, something right. their spirit. But that's not really biblical. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a certain type of connection that is going to take place with the one that you are meant to be with. And I will go as far as to say this. It's not a uh, catch-22 for everybody. Uh, every experience is unique. Uh, some people became yes. friends before they ever fell in love. Uh, some people consider that they fell in love at, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, uh, I'll say right. this, when I saw my wife, I knew that there was something about her that was not like any other girl I had met and it had nothing mm -hmm. to do with her looks. It was a connection. You know, and so when you deal with uh, looking for that rib, finding that rib, you're going to find, uh, as Pastor Josh said, something that is compatible with your DNA. And right. it's going to be like a merger that is taking place that doesn't feel like uh, work. Uh, it's going to be uh, easy. You're going to be able to be yourself. You're not mm -hmm. going to have to be extra. Uh, you're going to meet somebody that has a heart. Uh, that has more than uh, more something more than money, but they have uh, the heart and the humility that is attractive for sustainable relationships. All right, that sounded good to me, Doctor <laughs> Tuesday. <Yeah. laughs> that was good. I heard you say mm, mm. when he was talking about dating. Now uh, tell me who Eve is and what was her role in the garden. Her role is, I believe, it's, it's the same thing that it is today. All it's right, a help to her mate. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't really think it's changed. Um, and just as the the curse that came about in, in chapter three, that she desires her husband and she wants to satisfy him. I think the challenge is as singles, we put on the apron of mm -hmm. a wife before we ever establish what the bishop mentioned, what, which is friendship. And right. men's concept of friendship and interaction and friendship is different than ours mm -hmm. and so it's um i think that de developing that friendship being his companion being a safe place mm -hmm. being a safe place I, it's the same i don't think it's changed uh that much you know except we we you know we wear five inch heels now we're not walking around barefoot <laughs> <laughs> All day long, all day, <laughs> all day long. Now, now I have a, I have a, I have a question. What is, uh, or how do you know 
uh, when you are his desire versus his distraction or hers. How do you know when you're her desire versus her distraction? My, my. The, <laughs> come on, anybody. Well, All the church. <laughs> well, I'll jump right in on that because, you know, at the end of the day, whenever you're connecting with anyone, you must get a glimpse of their purpose, their identity, uh, their narrative, what's going on in their life. And you must be a person of substance who understands a little bit about what it takes for them to be them. And then you must develop uh, an attitude of respect for that person in their individual context. And then you have to, to discern your own personal narrative in terms of what your needs are and what your expectations are. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you may be a pint trying to fit into an ounce. You know what I'm Ooh. saying? And uh, right. uh, you may be too much. <laughs> you may be too needy. You may require too many dates, too many phone calls, too much maintenance. And you have to be transparent about your own uh, personal um, uh, condition of, of healing. Where are you in terms of security? Because some people, they the reason why they can't have success in their search and their quest for love it's because they're never transparent about where they are psychologically right. and emotionally. Right. And, and that's been my journey in my life to always be real about where I am, because if I'm real about where I am, I already know what I need out of a relationship. Mm -hmm. And if I am going to be such a demand on his or her life that is going to pull them away from what is necessary for them to continue in their purpose, then I am a distraction. Right. I am not a desire. I'm a distraction. I, I think if I may, um, I, some distractions are good. I can All right, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's I real. Tend to be very engaged in what I'm doing. So right. I need a man who's going to be like, babe, let's go. Let's go for a walk. Let's go. I need that. I need that. Not that he's pulling me away from my purpose, but he's demanding that I take a break because that takes care of me and it takes care of him. And I think communication is key. Uh, we started out talking about being whole. I don't know if everyone's going to be whole when they find their Adam, when they find their Eve, and Eve says, yes, you you the one, you know, yes, my God, thank you, Jesus. So I don't think everybody's going to be whole. I think people need to be striving towards wholeness. Mm -hmm. See, I think they need to be asked, they need to know what what are their weaknesses, what are their strengths, what, what are they vulnerable to? I, I often say men... Men desire to be needed. Women desire to be wanted. So all right, that's man, good. A man needs that's to good. be needed. He needs to be needed, but he don't want a needy woman. I mean, that's a that's a type rope. You might feel like you know you in the circle. My God, my God, my God. <laughs> but it's a type rope. You gotta learn how you cannot be needy, particularly for a man who is purpose. So you need to have purpose. He needs to have purpose. Mm. So the distraction, I totally agree with Bishop. It's knowing, knowing who I am and me knowing who you are and what is our assignment. Even if you're not, well, you, you know, we talk about church folk, right? So right. Kingdom, what is my purpose in God's <laughs> kingdom? And if this is my purpose, then I need you to know that. I need you to not look at me and think I am an apple when I really am, you know, the whole orchard. You know, I'm not just one thing. Right. The whole, the whole orchard. The whole orchard. I need somebody to put that in the comments. You know, Jesus, you know we the whole orchard. Yeah, don't, don't, don't limit him and don't limit her. It's right. a partnership. Right. I believe you gotta you gotta be in partnership, and it's what you need, baby. What you need? How can I help you strive to get to the? I need to be adding to your life, and you need to be adding to my life. Now, Angelo, mm -hmm. Angelo said you need an offering, Doctor Tuesday. <laughs> 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 okay, Pastor Josh. Next question. Okay. And since we're talking about communication, it's not noted anywhere in the Bible where Adam and Eve ever had a conversation. Adam talked to God and Eve talked to the to the serpent. Uh-huh. Right? They, but there's it's not noted anywhere that where they actually talk to each other. Come on, help us with the communication. How do we learn how to communicate? Well, since you like giving me the, the bangers, uh, 
Um, I think I think uh, you're absolutely right. We don't see we don't see uh, the progression of conversation. Uh, somebody said they need what a wall that they need a break. Uh, but uh, you don't see the progression. You don't see the progression of what we what we see in normal um even western society uh what we call dating and courtship or whatever in the garden i think it's interesting from this perspective um and i think there's certain themes that i believe that god is trying to highlight in the in the garden dynamic between adam and eve and one of those things i go back to is i believe that god heightens uh try, is trying to heighten the emphasis on the their dynamic being god centered and god ordained um, mm -hmm. And from the perspective of, from the perspective of, you know, God put him to sleep and he makes her, you know, he makes her for him. You know, it, you know, it's, it's, he does not give him a, a pick, you know, and that, and he's, <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't present multiple, multiple uh -huh. leaves to Adam, uh -huh. you know, God, bam, there she is. And he recognized who she is. So I think that communication in the dynamic from the, the the garden perspective is done from a, not not that communication in our perspective is not needed i think that god is just emphasizing uh from the from the beginning of what we see as a these relationships between man and woman is purpose you know purpose 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 and that connection between the two now don't get it twisted you know you're not you're not adam I'm not Adam. You, you're not Eve. You're going to need some conversation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to need some, you're gonna need to talk yes. about some stuff in 2020. <laughs> so let's not get it twisted. But I think, right. I, I, think, I, I think the thing that we have to highlight is understanding, and I, I, I believe everybody has alluded to this, is understanding, um, and, I, and I definitely agree with Dr. Tuesday, that I don't believe that everybody has to be totally healed and totally whole mm -hmm. to engage in relationship. What you must be is honest, honest, right? And progressing towards healing. You know, that's like saying, that's like saying that, that you can't do nothing unless you're hundred percent. There's some of us that will be sickly, you know, but as long as there's honesty and there is progression and there is mm -hmm. acceptance and there is a coming together, but, but uh, 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 you know, around a theme of whatever it may be, there can be healthy connection and relationship, but right. that starts with self-awareness. That starts with, you know, realizing who I am. So I cannot have, me as a man, I cannot have proper communication, even communication um, with a woman, Eve, a friend, whatever, if I'm not understanding the purpose. And that's, I think what, what we must understand is, is that honestly, there's a lot of people that we may entertain that we should not even be entertaining. That's going to that's mess with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because... That's that imitation real. That's the imitation real. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the reason yeah. I say that, the reason, the reason <laughs> I say that is because oftentimes if you are any any you have any level of self-awareness, right? You know, and you and, and you are looking at, I think Bishop spoke to it earlier, you know, and, and if you take your eyes off of the curves and the thighs for a moment, you know what I'm saying, and step back, and step back for a moment and look at it from a perspective of it will this help me? Can I help them? And right. that then you can get to a place of where then I am going to start to engage and communicate. A lot of times we don't even need to be communicating to some people because mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's it's not going you can you know we know what we need. You know, you might not know exactly right. everything, but you know what's not gonna work. You know, if you if you go zero to a hundred, you don't need to be with nobody that go to zero to one fifty. <laughs> you know what right. I'm you, right, you, right, right, right. You now you just mentioned you, you just mentioned Pastor Josh. You talked about those that that KFC them legs and thighs. Yeah, yep, just paying attention to them. <laughs> sometimes we have it. issues paying attention to the legs and thighs. Now, yep. When Adam, if I could use my spiritual imagination, I'm a preacher too. We all preach. <laughs> so right. If I could use my spiritual imagination, uh -huh. when uh, Adam took a look at Eve. He said, that's bone of my bone. And yep. I'm going to call you yep. woman right. because of what he saw. Glory Not because of what he knew, but because of what he saw. Because so, Dr. Tuesday, come on. Yeah, men are visual. And, and mm -hmm. men are visual and they're physical. And women are audible and verbal. And this mm -hmm. is, like, you know, I will often wonder these people who do these studies, you know, I'm like, who studied that women have 
twenty-five thousand words and men have eight. I mean, who who <laughs> right? <laughs> and solid folk all day, right? <laughs> we are verbal and we, mm -hmm. we not yep. only need to hear you say you look beautiful, we need you to yep. show us that we look beautiful because we're verbal and we're audible. So mm -hmm. but so even though we see in uh, Genesis, they did not have a conversation mm -hmm. that, pa that ain't passing the day because women, mm -hmm. hey, why aren't you talking to me? What's going on? Right. We want those words. And but that's, yep. even Absolutely. Also, that's even also a part of our desire is for him. Right. And we want to. Mm -hmm. hear I, I tell married men all the time. Let me tell you something. <laughs> tell him, tell him. A woman, a woman wants, she wants to hear your voice. She needs yes. to hear your voice. That moves everything in us. She wants to hear your voice. That's why she lays on your chest. That's mm -hmm. why she wants to hear your voice. And she wants to get that heartbeat of you so that she knows you, right? And so, and, and she, she, it's, um, yeah, talk more, bruh. And a brother, right. so I say a man who loves God and demonstrates his love in that communication with God and his communication with her. I listen, the prostitute wants the preacher. My God. Don't come on. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. It's, it, it's time for that water break. <laughs> he's talking, he's talking, and he's leading. Right? And she that's attractive to us. I tell single women all the time, you make her, he said, babe, make the reservation. Don't put it in your name, put it in his name. So when they mm -hmm. roll up and they say reservation for uh uh Jones, not your name, boo, his name. She likes right. that. So mm -hmm. I just yeah, communication is absolutely paramount in a in a successful relationship. I don't even know how people do it. Now, Pastor Josh also said something about God gave Adam one woman, not multiple. He didn't have a bunch of choices, but we have this thing nowadays in dating and courting. We really don't even know how to describe either one. But if God didn't give Adam a choice, y'all know where I'm getting ready to go with this. When you're single, you get to mingle with whoever you want to as long as you're single. Or are we supposed to be dating or courting as a single person? A Christian person, a kingdom context, one person at a are you, time. Are you talking? Are you talking about dating from from? Hey, how you doing? Let's go out Friday night and uh, uh, and and going this and doing that. I, what do you mean by dating multiple people? That's what I'm trying to get your definition. Do you when you're single? Okay. It's just hey, let's go get some hey. ice cream. I could go have ice cream with John today yeah, and yeah. and Josh tomorrow. Right, but that, <laughs> what, what are okay, we doing? So that, what are we doing? So that's, so that's more that's more friendship based, right? That's more, mm -hmm. you know, that's more friendship. I me me personally, I, I just I'm not of the the mindset. I do not advise people to get to the perspective of if it's a friend, it's a friend. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's nothing right. wrong with people of the opposite sex. You know what I'm saying? Y'all going to have ice cream. Y'all going going this. But I believe that when we start to get to the place where where it, that, that I'm looking at this individual as a potential, right? Potential mm -hmm. person. Um, mm -hmm. I think that we have to we have to we have to uh, uh, pigeonhole this this perspective to the place of that. I, you know, if I'm, I just, if I'm dating somebody every other week and I'm not, not going out with a friend, but dating, like I'm looking at you <laughs> as a potential somebody every week, I think that can be problematic. I don't think it's necessarily <laughs> wrong or you going to hell for it, but I think that it can be an issue because there are different voices. There are you're entertaining different people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that if it's a potential person, if it's a potential, it's a potential. Right, it's mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, I like you, you like me. We might, look, we might, we might, we might be, you know, there's something special here. You feel it, I feel it, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> I like what I, I like what I see. You, you like, you what like you what you see, see. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that, you know, what I'm saying? you know, but I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, of the mind to where we should be pushing people that, that as soon as they see somebody that may look good, 
that we are entertaining multiple and multiple and okay. multiple people from the context of somebody that I could potentially marry. Friends, okay. that's ain't nothing wrong, Dan. You go listen, you you can do as many things you want as a friend. That's a that's a platonic relationship. But I'm talking about somebody that you're not looking at in a platonic manner. You're looking at this individual as mm -hmm. hey, hey, you know what I'm saying? So I just believe that, you know, in the context of, 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 of courting and dating, uh, and I'm not trying to be super spiritual, but I, you know, I just believe that we have to be aware. <laughs> a lot of time we waste, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. When it yeah, comes yeah. to dating and courting, because we're not honest with ourselves and we allow loneliness and we allow, and we allow uh, uh, desperation to begin to drive us. That clock start kicking, you know what I'm saying? And we, I got to get somebody, I got hey. to get somebody. And I just mm. think that it can be difficult. May I ask a thought to that? Go ahead. Um, dating is not courting. No. Courting requires that you bring somebody in front of the council of the wise, right? Come on. <laughs> Hold on. I need everybody that's on this line. I need y'all to like and share this broadcast if y'all getting some tools from this and this is a good conversation i need y'all to like and share it out invite your friends come on back tuesday so I, you courting is the elevated so friendship dating courtship so mm -hmm. I, hey, I think even in, in the men please let me know but i think there's a place in dating where he picking up the check i can get my own ice cream <laughs> Let's all meet well, ice cream. I, and he might be like, I'm not because we're friends. You my dude. Listen. Oh, listen. Oh, no. you, you got the check. <laughs> I'm like, dude. Dr. Tooth. I'm like, hey, honey. You know? Dr. Tooth. It changes. And sometimes it's very organic how it moves, right? And you look up and you're like, now, yes. when did I start calling him boo? When did I become his partner? So, and it just happens. But courting, you bring in people in front of the council of the wise. My yes. brothers, my spiritual fathers, yeah. my pastor, yeah. my mother. Amen. Right. You know, so Tom. dating, you ain't bringing all them people around folk. Matter of fact, my mom yeah. wouldn't even want to see all them. My daddy's done all the glory. She'll be like, who? now who is that? So, you know, now I don't, I don't want to get the name wrong. You know what I'm saying? I know people who have dated people who have the same initial. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, they don't get it <laughs> so not only are you entertaining people you're entertaining spirits yeah right. wow. come on now yeah. that part oh. yes so you wonder and lord forbid y'all enter into to, to the uh the, the three letter word and start right the bedroom we just gonna say the, the bedroom the bedroom the bedroom so, <laughs> so you enter into that and now you wondering why I didn't used to just flip off on people. I just go off on people now because they go off. Right. <laughs> right. And you have, you have. Yes. A, Transferring them spirits. Spirit. So, yes. Be very careful. Um, uh, yeah. Do all of that in your friendship. But I believe if you're dating, uh, it, it's a it's a process of elimination. I mean, mm -hmm. you just need to know that that's what it is. It's a process of elimination. Okay, I like you. You get me. I think you're safe. Okay, I'm whittling it down. And by the time he gets, I believe by the time a man gets to a place where he like, okay, you the one. Let's elevate this. He didn't right. probably whittle. He didn't went through all the beasts of the field. <laughs> Top of water, Bruce. Because <laughs> he named every beast in the field. Like first, he, he, he did it first. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She the chosen one. Hey man, I said it and I ain't taking it back. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and when you're doing all that dating, you have to know your level of vulnerability because right. some people are so desperate to be loved that they become mm -hmm. attached to everybody that they engage. So uh, they end up through their desperation uh, getting emotionally connected to everybody yes. that we have dated. And as a consequence, their soul is conflicted in multiple places. And that is uh, that is the assignment of the enemy. That's the strategy of the enemy to get you to a place to where you're so conflicted emotionally and mentally and broken that when the right one comes, you're not prepared for them because your heart is in, in so many different places. Basically. So even, even in the dating process, you have to know how much you can handle at one time. 
how many people you can entertain at one time. And then you have mm -hmm. to be honest up front with them to let them know what your intentions are. Uh, what, right. what, you're, what are you working toward? Uh, what is your goal here? And you have to you have to really, really talk to yourself uh, so that you don't become so attached so quick. Uh, and as Dr. Tuesday was saying earlier, uh, I believe the first step to dating is friendship, you know, yep. because the friendship is the vetting process, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that will take some time. People can hide crazy for for a while. I, I tell for a long church, time. Things that always shows up late, you know, and, and by the mm -hmm. time it shows up, your your feelings are involved and your feelings sometimes can see crazy, but will tolerate crazy because I don't want to break my heart by right. giving up crazy. So right. I need to definitely uh, be able to have a vetting system and I can't vet anything if I have no personal self-control. All my right. right. Okay. I, myself, I can't take you through the process of the vetting. Go ahead. That's good. Okay, Bishop. Who whose fault was it that the apple was eaten? It was an apple. Uh, was it an apple? <laughs> <laughs> whose fault was it that that the forbidden fruit was consumed? Because it's an age old debate. Help whose fault Bishop. was it? I, I I don't think we can pin it on one particular individual, but if I would have to just choose one out of everybody involved in the scenario, I would say Adam. I would say um, it was probably his fault because God had given him the instructions about the fruit that it was not to be ate of. It was Adam's job to give that information to Eve and then hold her accountable to it. You know, and um, I try not to get into a male bashing session but I think the elephant in the room is men don't know the power that they carry. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I do believe right. that that yes. healing does carry major significance because uh, men not only are a, a benefit to everyone that they engage when they are healed, but men become healers. Women, uh, they are nurturers, but men are healers. And there is a that's difference. Good. A nurturer can comfort you, but a, but a healer, he can put you back together. And uh, it, it's very important that you understand uh, that they can yes, take sir. a woman who's been messed up, jacked up, battered, uh, <laughs> kind of taken emotionally, spiritually. And if he's in a good place uh, mentally, spiritually, financially, uh, if he's uh, uh, if he has a, a good temperament about him, that man can guide that woman. You know, mm -hmm. I, I tell uh, men all the time who have families, your family is going to be where you led them, you know, because uh, the, the anointing flows from the head down. The leadership is on the head, on that man. And yes. men, the problem with men today is they're becoming so emasculated and they're losing the crown that God gave them. And they're becoming just as feminine and just wow. as emotional as the woman. And because of that, uh, emotional leaders are not good leaders. Uh, uh, if, uh, leaders have to be, uh, in, they have to be informational. They have to be wise. And it's okay to have emotions, but when you are emotional, you can become dysfunctional. And so you, right. when you have a person who has emotions, that means you you possess feelings, but you're not possessed by your feelings. And, Ooh, and that's good. <laughs> lead women because if you are a man in a marriage and you have you you have married a woman and it comes up later on that she grew up in an abusive context and she mm -hmm. has a, a fighting mindset of uh, because she's emotionally conflicted because of abuse if you can't control yourself you can teach her how to control herself it's hard for anybody to fight against a brick wall but if you are emo uh, are moved emotionally or you're a reactor instead of a responder, then you are not going to help that woman become healed in her uh, emotionally conflicted uh, uh, space. And so this is why, why men, I believe Adam was responsible for what happened in the garden. I believe that's why he ate of the fruit, not because Eve enticed him, but I believe he ate of it uh, to take responsibility for what had taken place. That's my personal opinion. Wow. So I what definitely. did Adam, Eve was left alone with the serpent? Was
Was there an issue with covering in the garden? And how does that translate for us today? Is the man the covering? Should he have been covering her? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, go ahead, Pastor Josh. That question's for everybody. Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, when God, you got to understand that when it comes to Adam, God gives Adam headship. Um, and headship brings with it the element of covering. And to cover means not just to be in a position to make decisions and uh, a power trip, but covering also is responsibility, accountability, and protection. It's the reason why when God comes into the garden, he does not ask for Eve. He does not even check for Eve. He says, Adam, where art thou? That's you know? right. And when he asks him, where art thou? He's not, he's not, you know, at many times in the Bible, God asks us these uh, almost rhetorical questions, right? Uh, Adam, where art thou? Like he don't know where he's at, but he's not really asking him for its physical place. You've got to understand that this is, you know, when mm -hmm. God speaks, you have to break down why he's saying what he's saying within the context of what he said. When he asks Adam, where art thou? He's not asking for a physical description mm -hmm. of where you are physically at. I know where you are, but yeah. Adam, where art thou? Because the covering has been lifted. Because Ooh. Adam, what 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 is happening now is on, because, because of you being out of position <laughs> and you being out of alignment, you're in a what we are looking at now is that I'm holding you responsible, right? Now Eve has her part because she is cursed, right? She that she gets her gets what God wants to do with her. But when God comes and knocks on the door of humanity, when he comes and walks into this garden that he made, you got to understand that he began to talk. He has communion with Adam. Realize mm -hmm. that before the fall, there is no disease. There is no sickness. There is no mm -hmm. lack. There is mm -hmm. no want. God spoke. Listen, God and Adam had a relationship that was un, un, unrestricted by anything. They walked, talked together. I mean, like, like friends, like a conversation. But when he is out of position and out of alignment, when, when God steps into the garden and says, Adam, where art thou? Mm -hmm. He's not talking physically. But he said, Adam, I, 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 I've given you accountability. I've given you headship. I've given you authority, not just from a, a, a place of that you're the man. But Adam, I gave you the ability to name everything in here. That's I right. created it and gave you the power to call it what you want. It's a tiger because you called it a tiger. That's it's right. a lion <laughs> because you called it a lion. It's That's a woman right. because you called it a woman. Right. I just gave it to you. I've given you authority and headship. So now God is checking on on the authority that he has placed in Adam and say, Adam, you messed up. Because now the problem is that because of covering and headship and accountability is out of place, what is happening now, now man is in a fallen state. Now you are hiding yourself, not just from God, but you're hiding yourself from your from your position. You're hiding yes. yourself from your responsibility. You're hiding good, yourself good. from your accountability. You're supposed to be on guard, Adam. And what has happened is when we when we lose that that reality, and this is why the world is so tricky. And this is why the devil fights men the way that he fights men because yeah. he knows he knows that God operates according to his order and his alignment. When men are in position, listen to me, when men are in position, the devil is very, very threatening and afraid because he understands that the oil flows within order and structure and alignment, right? Even in the all throughout the Old Testament, right? We, 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 I don't want to get to our track, but many times we think we, we, we look at the ministry of prayer, the ministry, the ministry of intercessory no. prayer, and we, and we allocated, we allocated it in 2020 as, as a, as a woman ministry, God, right? When you look right. in the old Testament, it was men that were the intercessors. Right. It was the, yes, listen, yes, listen, yes. David, David, David allocated a whole yes. segment of the Levitical priesthood that was worshipers and prayer warriors. He has instituted before. So what I'm saying is, is that this is what society has even crept into the church that, we, that, that we expect women to pray, but we, ex we, we don't expect men to pray. And when right. headship, headship, right. accountability, and responsibility should be from the perspective of that if God has given me the authority to lead, if God has given me the authority to be accountable, I'm the protector, I'm the one in control, and I should be the one that, that is leading in all of these things because God is checking for me. And Adam, I, where are you? And let me tell you, yes. that's, where are you? that's fine to us. A woman mm -hmm. is the king <laughs> in God 
a man leading that that is just sure enough fine I, I have often thought that that's right i believe also when god was asking that that was so good but that's the plate lord have mercy that was good <laughs> when god said adam where are you also where are you at up here what are you thinking yep. i I women mo when a woman who loves God and let me I don't even necessarily think she gotta love God. <laughs> really. We want to submit. We want to come under a man's <laughs> leadership. We really yes, do. Man. And as the bishop yeah. said, she might have that fighting spirit or she might be have issues with trust or mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. whatever her issues are, and because we all bring Samsonite. Right into our relationships. If That's right. Weathers, you can call it Louis Vuitton, <laughs> but hey, Samsonite is strong. It weathers the storm, right? So we all have that and we bring that. And a man who loves God, I believe this, he can love all that stuff right on up out of her. Yes. 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 Love all of that because I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to protect you. I'm here to mm -hmm. cover you. But where is your head? And so right. as the head, where is your head? Where mm -hmm. are you at? And mm -hmm. I, I tell single women all the time, I believe men, the a man who is serious about what the covenant of marriage means, <laughs> it is frightening when they understand what their role is, mm. what, what God has really given them responsibility to do. And because so many of them have not had the example and they don't have the um village of men around them telling them right this is that's what right you, do. you know man th this is how you handle that uh it, it it is very frightening uh so some men are i won't say running from marriage but they don't necessarily want to engage in marriage because it's serious business you know yeah. and so which i think is good but where is your head at where is, your, Where is your head? What, what is your vision? I, I right. tell married mm. couples all the time on your job, you do an annual review. You need to be doing an annual review in your marriage. Sit mm. down and look at what, let, let's see, let's how, so they need to be, you know. What's have, working and what's not working. Yeah, what's working, what's not working. We have uh, right. 360 reviews in corporate, right? And everybody's reviewing all your stuff. So you need to sit down and have those conversations, I believe. That is so important. And when a man trusts the woman that he's with, one, you ain't running your mouth, telling all your friend girls what he said. Come on with that. Come on with that. Yes. Somebody, somebody, somebody <laughs> pass the plate. You're not running <laughs> your mouth. Yes. And, and even as Pastor said, as Pastor Josh said, you know, men were communicating with God. Men were the first journal, journal or words, journalers. Yep. Yeah. Moses, yep. my good. They read and they wrote and they talked. Yep. Ooh, yep. good, All of good. Those things. And women are the right. I mean, we know men right because we, we have all these wonderful books with authored by men. But we men don't read. Yes, they do, and they can. They do. Oh. They do. Absolutely. They, right. So I think so much of that is when God allowed me to. Uh, my pastor put me over the intercessors to oversee the intercessors in our church. I, I was adamant that men had to be in the ministry mm -hmm. because you, and, and I'm not going to get off track here, but when you start understanding what spiritual warfare is, let me tell you something. I ain't scared of the devil at all, but at all, who know <laughs> his authority and he's coming yes, after sir. the devil. Yes, man. Oh, he's That's right. Back just because he, the devil understands authority. And so because he understands authority and that man is praying over his wife and his family and his children, the enemy hears that. He hears that. And so step into that place of intercession, man. We want you. I, I believe a woman who is confident in who God has placed her and created her to be, she will push her man forward. And Amen. She, That's me. Dr. Tuesday, Angelo said he about to make an Angelo mm. said they they about to make an appointment with you. They need an appointment with the doctor. They need an appointment. Come on, Pastor Bishop Woods. I see you on the edge of your yeah. seat. I got it because this <laughs> I'm passionate about this particular uh topic dealing with the covering because there's so many mm -hmm. men who don't understand the difference between being a covering to their woman and controlling their woman. Bishop. Mm. 
Talk, sir. Talk, talk about talk. it. Talk about talk, it. Sir. No, um, we have we have taken that scripture in Ephesians about uh, the husband being the head of the wife, and we have whipped our, our wives with it or our potential wives without understanding that even in the garden when when uh, Pastor Josh alluded to the where art thou question, and then Adam says, I hid myself because I was naked. You know, Adam hid himself because he was naked. Eve was naked. But why were they naked? Because they didn't have on clothes. No, they were naked because they had left their coverings. Yes. Eve left her wow. covering, which was Adam. Yes. Adam left his covering, which was God. Good God Almighty. So as a consequence, they were naked, not because of what they had on, but, but because of who was supposed to be over them was no longer over them. But it but it's a it, it is not a controlling mechanism, it is a covering. Jesus right. gave the paradigm of leadership to his disciples. He said, He that is greatest among you, let him be your servant. You mm -hmm. serve well when you cover, and you cover well when you serve. Yes. And Man. men don't understand. I mean, I just heard Dr. Tuesday spell it out. You love a woman into her healing. Yes. You yeah, serve yeah. a woman into her healing. Yes. And yes. In order for you to do that, you're going to have to filter yourself of all your personal insecurities, all of the bragging that you did in high school, all the mind games that you played to break a woman down. You're going to have to leave that mentality because men who are insecure, they seek to break a woman down. Men who are secure, they seek to build a woman up because Absolutely. they realize that the, the greatest uh, commendation to them is a woman that knows who she is that stands by their side. You and so, say that. you know, you have to cover your woman. You have to protect your woman. Uh, a part of it is prayer. Another part of it is care, concern, listening to her, talking to her, honoring her, doing all of those things that are necessary to build that context of security within that woman so she can feel covered. Eve was left uncovered. It wasn't because Adam was a bad husband. It was more so because Adam was a negligent husband. Mm, and yes, when you are negligent, wow. negligence is just wow. as bad as any other sin you can commit against your spouse. You need to be very vigilant when it comes down to your spouse. Uh, you need to know uh, who your spouse is connected to. You need to know uh, uh, what your spouse is doing uh, because then you can better cover the person that you're with. But we have to know the difference between control and covering. I, I talk to a lot of men that are frustrated with their women because she won't do what I tell her to do. And I tell them all the time, you can get whatever you want from her if you love her. <laughs> You talk yes, the right bitch. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, you can. Go, go, these go comments back. are off. These comments, they are coming so fast. They are not playing in these comments. They are already ready for the sequel. We have to do benevolence. <laughs> Right. Bishop, do right. benevolence. Okay. I, I have another do question benevolent. now. <laughs> it said, is there a difference? Is there a difference between a soulmate and a helpmate? Ooh. Mm. Mm, yeah. I mean, it would have to be because God didn't say he was going to give you a soulmate. He said he was going to give you a helpmate. And, mm -hmm. you know, I believe it would, it's a wonderful thing if your helpmate is your soulmate. But I believe wow. you can make your helpmate your soulmate. Okay. As the two become one flesh, and that one, you know, is one <laughs> under God, you're you're aligning your thoughts, your emotions, and your will with your spouse. You know what 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 is her desire? What is his desire? What are your thoughts? What are her thoughts? Your souls become connected. I think often people look for a soulmate, but ain't nothing in them about to help you or cover you. Right. Mm. And so while you're looking for a soulmate, you know, sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. You got it. That's all. You know, sometimes your 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 soul, your emotions are so uh, at the top of your soul emotions, 
God's will. And it's at the top. So you're, you can't look, it can't be about a soulmate. I, I want us to almost like kind of move past that and, and find a purposeful mate. Come on. Jesus. That's good. Dr. So, Tuesday. You love God. I love God. You got Dr. Tuesday God. passing out prescriptions. Right. You know, and, and so you first of all, me a woman being a helpmate is not about her knowing how to cook a bit a good pot of spaghetti. It, it, that's not it. That's not what being a helpmate is about. Now I'm gonna encourage you to know how to do that, sis. However, <laughs> that's not what it's about, right? It, uh, being a helpmate is helping him get to where God has put him in the earth to be. Now, yes, a lot of the people who are listening to us are mature people of a certain age. All right. We, we may feel like at 40, 50, 60, and you know, you might have some 30, some millennials in here, some Gen Zs, but we may feel like at this point, I, I don't I I shouldn't have to birth a man. Right. Right. It's right. Your purpose. Maybe not, because he needs to come with that. Adam came with purpose. Adam came with a job. Adam came knowing what he was in the earth to do. At this point <laughs> in our lives, we should come with those things, we, uh, male or female. I may not be totally clear about what my purpose is, but I'm on the journey. The right woman, honey, will put him on the fast track. All but right. He to be Talk, Dr. Tuesday. He got to be looking for the sister that, that, you know, she can wear Nikes and red bottoms. Listen. All day. day. All day. <laughs> right? and, and it's not about connecting with a woman that you only want her for what she can do for you to get you to the next level. No, that's not what it's about. But it's about knowing this is a purposeful connection. This is yes. a purposeful connection. And mm -hmm. all that you, and, and more better that, you know, she got the, you know, curves and she cute and y'all got the chemistry and you smile when you see her and y'all can wink. Y'all got y'all chemistry across the room. All that's great. But some of that stuff don't fade. Yep. Sometimes yep. it can be a great. Who she is. Go ahead, Pastor Bishop. I'm sorry, Dr. Tuesday, but you you just, you know, you got my, my creative juices to flow in here. Going um, in. She going in. <laughs> I just want to say this, man. Sometimes they can be a wonderful lover, but a terrible helper. Yep. Ooh. And sometimes we will settle for the sex when what we really need is the help. Mm -hmm. Glory to go. That's, that's right. what and, and God, the same thing with her. He, he's exactly. a wonderful lover. But he's a horrible right. communicator. Listen, you know that that man is emotionally empty. He is not <laughs> emotionally available to you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Right. Not because the sex is good or he's telling you all the right things or he texts you a couple of times a day and say, hey, beautiful. Can right. Can you pick up the phone and say, hey, beautiful? Right. Can you ask me right. what I'm doing? How's yes. your day going? But a man that is, listen, and, and everybody, know, I love God's creation called black men, good God almighty. And I Listen, say, hallelujah. The world, the church say amen. The world, when, men, when, when, when men leave, when uh, men leave, when black men leave. But a man that is not, because we need, I just told you, we're audible and we're verbal and we're emotional. A man that is not um, emotionally available to you will suck the life out of you. Ooh, and yes. a woman mm. that is emotionally needy will leave leave a man as a turnip. And he mm. has to constantly be flourishing in his garden. Mm -hmm. So are you watering his garden? Right? Or, or drying it out. With what you say, are you encouraging right. him? Do you just know how to be quiet when he, you know? Because we we grown up here, there's only so many ways you can slap it up, flip it and rub it down. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You know, in the yeah. church, but let's be real. It's only so it's only so much you can do. What are you doing outside of that? What are you doing outside of that? I didn't hear that. I said, what are we doing outside of that? We talked about the bedroom and settling for sex, but there's no communication. We we, we taking the sex, but we don't, we're not getting any help. It's only so many ways you could twist it. You gotta have something to have on the table outside of that. You gotta know what you need. You yeah. must know what you need. Stop telling yourself I don't need that, because you think he's gonna 
feel some kind of way about you needing that. I mean, the bishop said earlier, if you need 20 calls a day, that's a problem. Go get a line. <laughs> that's a problem. But if you need to hear his voice in the morning, right? If you're, when you're dating, because if you're married, y'all yep. be right there. Amen. But you, if you need that, babe, I just want to hear your voice. You know, right. say good morning. That call should not always be coming from you. Whoever did that right. movie, he just stayed into you. They was right. 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 They was when right. a man wants a woman, he goes after that woman. That's I'm right. Gonna say one thing, and I'm going to let these men of God, you know, interject it here. Um, <laughs> not, not let, but I want you to. Um, you know, when we come, on, about submission. Men, come we on, submission. Come on, submission. God showed me something years ago about dating. Remember when you were in elementary school and you would put paint on your hand? And then they would put a white piece of paper on the wall. Uh -huh. And people, right. everybody would put their handprints on there. That's what dating does. Mm -hmm. Everybody's mm. handprint is on what God wants to present Ooh, you yes. as your, Goodness. your husband, as a bride. All them handprints. Goodness on gracious. On him. And it's pretty on the wall when your parents come for parent-teacher conference day. Which mm -hmm. hand is my baby's? There go my ah. baby's hand. <laughs> you didn't have so many hands on you. You don't even remember. You don't remember. Oh, right. So it's important that we recognize the value that we have mm. when we come to the table. Whether your credit score is 800 or you, you moving up the ladder from your 600. Whatever it is. Know the value that you bring to the table. Yeah. And allow God to sanctify you and have a season that you can purify yourself from all the handprints. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let me, let me, can I add this real quickly? Um, Absolutely. I, I am, I am on the side of the, the, the coin that likes to speak into more purpose mate over soul mate, simply because the term, that term, mm -hmm. Um, um, sometimes gets distorted in society. Um, the reason why I, I say uh, uh, purpose made and even to the to the context of helpmate is because when when God uh, in, in His creation and His design, uh, God said, "Listen, it is not good for man to be alone." Right? Okay, yeah. it's not good for him to be alone. So the first thing we got to pick apart is what is the alone alone uh, 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 text uh, context right. mean. And That's then correct. why why does God have to make him somebody, okay, that is going to help him? The question we have to answer is okay. what is she helping? Right? What is what is she being presented to him? The reason is that when God made made man, he made him complete, he made him whole. Listen, <laughs> listen, and, and, and this is the thing that we don't understand. He didn't need her, he did man, Adam did not need Eve to communicate to God. Right. Mm -hmm. he, he, listen, him and God had, was all right. But what God did, God looked into what yes. he had placed and deposited long term in Adam and said, for, yes. when it comes down to the purpose, when it comes down to your mandate, when it comes down to your call and your anointing, whatever I want you to do, whatever mm -hmm. gifts are inside you, you're not going to be able to do it by yourself, even with me wow. helping you. Even wow. with me helping you, you're going, to need, you're going to need an ambassador. You're going to need somebody Ooh. in the earth realm that is That's going good. to be with you, that is Come going on. to help you walk out your purpose. So Did he said, listen, it's not good. Yes, I said, it, I said ambassador. Yeah, ambassador. <laughs> so right. He is not, <laughs> he is just not. So he says, listen, I'm, listen, the help that I'm giving you is to help you do what, that which you cannot do by yourself. That That's is why. Right. That when the right woman comes along, it appears that a man can go from go from looking like a five to looking like a ten. Hello, so listen, the right woman to get that man dressed together, get right. his shoe game together, get his socks together. Listen, <laughs> listen, he start listen, he start taking you listen, he start being listen, cleaning his face, he's scrubbing his face, you know, taking care of his I'm just saying, because <laughs> she is to help him. You see what I'm saying? Do that which he cannot do simply by himself. So God said, right. it's, not, it's not good for you to be alone. And it's not right. just alone that you need somebody next to you in the middle of the night. We thank God for that. You know what I'm saying? Real right. men, we thank God for that. That woman that's next to you in the middle of the night. But it's deeper than just a physical thing. She that is, is so assigned, to, assigned to Adam 
so that to to help him do even with the help of God. And I think we got to highlight that even in this perfect because God makes Eve before the fall. She's not oh. she's not made as a response to, to, to a mistake or a failure That's in good. Adam's perfect perfection in Adam's complete mm -hmm. design. And God, being pleased what, after he, and God being pleased in what he had made, God looked at Adam and said, it's not good for you to be alone. Mm -hmm. Because listen, listen, what you need, what you need, what you need is somebody in the earth. Yes, an ambassador. This is not, listen, so this good. is not, is he good. did not make her from the bone, from the bone of a foot. Of his foot or his ankle or, or his toe, he made of he made him from his rib, right? Covering protection, you know. And and I think that we got to understand that that she's helped. So I, I'm with Doctor Tuesday. What is the purpose? Let's find people. Let's look for people that there is a mutual benefit to the purpose that is in in our life. I should be ascending you, and you should be ascending me. I should be a catalyst. I should be a catalyst. That Adam should be a catalyst to Eve, and Eve should be a catalyst to Adam. Oh, anytime man. where there is a distortion, anytime That's where a, that man on. is rising and that woman is dying, something ain't right. Woo! Anytime that woman is rising and that man is dying, there is a disconnect. That is that not is the good. plan of God. Yes. Right? We should bone in my bone. Let, for this cause, a man should leave all their mother and cleave yes. to his wife. One That's flesh. Right. And, and, if we're one flesh, we rise together. We fall together. You see what I'm saying? And I think that we got That's to understand. So I, I am of the, the mindset, let's look for purpose mates. Let's look for people yes. that are that are that will ascend and make and be a catalyst, a good, a good ambassador to what we are called to do in the earth. That is so Listen, good. I was trying to put the heart emojis on. I forgot I'm hosting a show. I can't put the, <laughs> put the heart and emojis also, on, but Marcy put the fire on for me. Come on, Bishop. And also <laughs> the covering of Adam is held under scrutiny and accountability. We cannot negate the competency of Eve. That mm. Eve has a responsibility. That's yes, why she yes. gets a curse. Mm -hmm. if, Eve is, uh, if, if she's innocent in her in her engaging of this disobedient act, then she's clear of the curse and she's not held responsible for it. And I, I said that because when Pastor Josh made the statement of one rising and the other falling, a lot of times there are too many times we marry people and we date people that are more assignments than connections. Oh my, oh my. Oh my. Come on. Talk and about so, that. as a consequence, I spend more time trying to pull you into your purpose than, mm -hmm. we, than we both just engaging our purposes and becoming a strength to each other. And right. I think that that is the, the, um, the context that we need to create where there are two people demographically compatible, uh, be it uh, mindset, mentality. It may not be financial. But sometimes mm -hmm. your, your financial demographic may be a direct result of opportunities that you had that I didn't have. Even if you make more money than me, we can both be compatible in mentality and still build together. It, it becomes a problem when one is dragging the other while in addition to the dragging, having to reach for what they're trying to get a hold they do of. It. Wow. You can't do it. You can't do it. Eve and has to call dead weight. Yes, dead weight. That's it, doctor. And and we love, you know, you know, I'm sure at, in all of our lives we may have been a little bit of dead weight, you know. Um at some but, point. Right? <laughs> but but once you come to a realization that God has a purpose for me and I want to align mm -hmm. myself, even in my friendships, they're yeah. purposeful, you know, yes. um versus the associations that you have. You know, marriage right. is for a lifetime till death do you part, you know. And so mm -hmm. I think also with um, whether married couples or in this dating process or courting to get to that place, we have to be honest. What a man needs in his 20s or 30s is not what a man needs in his late 40s, 50s, 60s. It's not going to be there just these. So when we talk about aligning purposes, what does he need help with? There's some mm. things at 50, mm. 50 you don't need help with. You know, mm, it can be good. better, it can be sharpened, 
and she may not need help with, but that's why it's important to communicate. But like, yes. what, what is it that, well, how can I help you? That That's just something in networking, in regular networking, business networking. Mm -hmm. When you encounter somebody, what is it that I can do for, do for you? Do we ask right. that of the person that we are pursuing marriage with or in marriage with? What can I do for you today, babe? I, I, once, I used to tell couples, and I still do, do your best to outlove out love your spouse today. If wow. you want to be in competition, out love him. Like, oh, I got one up on you. I got one up on you. You know, That's good. you know, and it's an innocent love competition. So no one ever feels like they, they're losing. So right. often women feel like they're giving, giving, giving. Yet men are saying, yeah. I did this, I did that, I did this. What do you mean? And so, but it's communication. Mm -hmm. I once had a young lady said, but every time I go to the store, I buy him such and such and such. I said, girl, he don't care about you buying him no socks and t-shirts. What you doing? <laughs> at home? He don't care about that. And so it's communicating, babe. What do you need? What do you need from me? And guess what? If they don't know how to answer it at the moment, Give them some time to sit on it. Give them some time to think about it. You know, right. talking, and, and even though women, we have all of these words, we don't always know what we want. Right. It's a great exercise. That right. We, what do I need for this season of my mm -hmm. life? What do I need for this season? And that's one of the most important things is understanding what season you're in, because that's going to alleviate a lot of heartache, a lot of wasted time, a lot of distraction, understanding what season you're in, not the other person, not what their assignment is. I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of wanting to help align somebody so much with their assignment that I left my assignment unmanded, right? Wow. Which was a waste of time. And anything that comes before the assignment that God puts on our lives, he will cause an interruption. But mm. even alignment, he will cause an interruption to that thing. When a car needs an alignment, it pulls. When a car is mm. not correctly aligned, it's going to pull in the direction. Yes. It is That's not good. supposed to good, go. Doctor. Yes. And when a car needs a balance, when you get to a certain speed, it's going to start to shake. Yes, yep. it will. Everybody is not meant to go up with you. Yeah. Because they will Absolutely. shake you, your foundation, your purpose. You need to yep. understand the balance. And you have to be in alignment so you're not pulling me and I'm not pulling you or pulling our family or pulling our marriage, our ministry, our business, whatever it is, into a direction that is not God's will. So it is right. important that we are in alignment and we have balance. You need, you need both. It's a horrible thing to go and get new tires and they balance your car because you got new tires. So you get a new woman right. or you go get a new man and you feel right. like <laughs> but you still not aligned. So you still right. pulled in a direction you're not supposed to go because that's not the person you're supposed to be with. Not the Tuesday. Mm -mm. So she tearing it up. Now we so know, even in relationships, as it relates to seasons and cycles, mm -hmm. sometimes we're in a cycle because we won't get it in the season that we're supposed to get it in. We're not listening, wow. we're not aligning, we're not praying, we're not understanding where we are. And sometimes the not getting it in the season will help to cause us to go in cycles. And though we are seeing, uh, dating a different man, it's the same spirit. Though we're dating a different woman, it's the same spirit. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> Well, I, I think that um, attraction, the law of attraction is, is connected to the law of focus and focus is connected to mindset. And so, you know, perhaps there are so many people who wonder why they end up in the same scenarios with different people. It's because their mentality has, has not changed. And so uh, you, you, you begin to connect with the same type of person in a different situation because right. the law of attraction, you're going to have to renew your mind so that you can begin to choose better. And I think mm. a lot of times we spend too much time playing victim instead of Ooh. exposing our own deficiencies yes. 
that cause yeah. us to become a victim. Wow. There are a lot of people that never deal with them. I mean, I've, I've counseled so many people that have trouble with introspection and self-evaluation. And because of that, they continue to just reproduce the same narrative. Uh, and uh, in order to really change uh, that mindset, you got to learn the, you got to learn what you need to learn in the season so that you don't continue to rehearse uh, the same season. And that that means then you have to keep your eyes open, not just on what you see uh, in others, but but on what but on what you see in yourself. What do right. you see in yourself and what do you see that needs to change within yourself? Because I believe what really makes you an adequate mate for anybody is constant um, self-development, oh, uh, yeah. self yeah. uh, dealing yeah. with um, uh, upgrading who you are on a constant basis, always being committed to being a lifelong learner and growing year after year. And uh, a lot of us, you know, we want people that come with the batteries included and we don't even have mm -hmm. all of our parts. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> let alone battery. We're demanding what we don't even deliver. You know, my God. yes, sir. If you want to make demands, yes, then you need to uh, have a strong delivery, and uh, because of right. that, we're ending up with the same uh, situation with different people. That's good. You That's all good. are not going to believe that we are at our just passing our hour mark. This conversation is so good and so needed. These comments are shooting out like fire. It's amazing. You gotta do part two, Lynn. You gotta do part yeah. two. We gonna do part two. We all agree to part two. You gotta do part two. Do part two. We you gotta part do part two. two. Is that okay? Yeah, you gotta do part Dr. Two. Tuesday, yeah. somebody in the comments is asking, what is the game? Where can they find your book? Actually, before you uh, respond, Dr. Tuesday, I'm going to have each one of um, the panelists let you all know where you can reach them, where their products are, what they're doing, where the church is. But right before we do that, I have one last question. What are some of the lessons, good and bad, that we can learn from the garden today regarding love and relationship? I need the two-minute funeral answer this time. <laughs> what can we learn from the garden today? Talk to your mate. Uh, mm. Communicate. Um, be a safe place. Um, be a confidant. I think it's important that um, a woman becomes a confidant to the man mm -hmm. that uh, she is with. Um and uh, communicate. I think it's important to build that friendship and that trust. And each of you needs to have your own individual relationship with God. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's very important um, that he's able to pour into her and she's able uh, to pour in to him. So that, that would be the lessons. Um, yeah, I would say. Come on, Pastor Josh. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think that um, I mean so much, so much you can pull from 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 the garden, right? So many different mm -hmm. um, lessons, so yeah, many different so lessons and, and, and principles that you can uh, the, the the pull. I think that one of the, the crucial lessons that we can pull and apply in the 2020 context when it comes to uh, relationships in the context of the kingdom and what we are doing. Um, I think that understanding, um, and I think Bishop alluded to it, who you are, you know, uh, uh, being honest with yourself and yeah. recognizing um, not only what you need to work on, but also what you need in order to sustain you. I think one of the, the one of the oh. mistakes uh, that we do is is that we we automatically assume that the person that we are interested in, the person that we are desiring, it automatically needs the type of love or needs to be loved the way that we interpret love, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not always necessarily the case. So I think that what the garden teaches us is the dynamic. It teaches us of of the headship of of Adam. It teaches us the design of God. The purpose of mm -hmm. Adam, the purpose of man, and and the woman's purpose to 
to uh, Adam. Not only that, not only headship and accountability and responsibility, but also shows us the 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 uh, the essential nature of the woman of how that she is absolutely needed, and it is not from the place of being a slave or the man being a dictator, but it is from the perspective of of who she of, of assignment of to to that man. So I think the garden to teach us that when it comes to to relationships when it comes to dating when it comes to courting don't waste time you know and don't <laughs> feel bad i'm gonna say this don't feel bad by cutting stuff off because you can see stuff i know that's right can see it. <laughs> you know you know the individual might be saying, what did i do what do i do what did i do wrong i like you i feel you and they might not can't really have the understanding and the revelation that you see that you see what they can't see. And it's not necessarily that they are wrong. It's necessary. It's really more so that you are not the rib for me. I'm speaking from a man perspective, right? All that, right. That we cannot, we cannot continue to try to force ribs into bodies that they were not designed Ooh. for. You know, Ooh. just because, just because I like this rib, I seen this rib. I seen this real walking in the grocery store. I seen this real putting them groceries in the car. You know, I seen this real at the gym. I seen this real at the church. You know, I love the way this real worship and praise. I, oh God, I love the way she got her hair done. I love the nails. I love, I love, I love the. I love the heels. I love it all. Right, but I've got. To, I cannot waste time trying to trying to put ribs that I desire, but not necessarily for me. Right, I have to understand what is for me and not necessarily what I desire. I cannot, we as men, we cannot continue to try to bring ribs and pieces into us. And it's not necessarily that 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 woman or that rib is wrong, she's just not for you, she's meant for somebody else. And I think that we have to understand that in order to walk in purpose and to be powerful in the things that God wants us to do in this, in this world. That's good, that was good. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> Man, you guys have been amazing tonight. But if I could add <laughs> a little uh, bit to this in closing, I would say two lessons in the garden. Very practical. Number one, keep the wrong people out of your relationship. I know the that's serpent, right. Uh, the serpent should have never had access to Eve. And a lot of people, their relationships have met demise because the wrong voices got involved. That's mm, uh, let's go, Bishop. That's number one. Number two, just because God joins it together doesn't make it a package deal. Uh, God does the joining, and it's our responsibility to do the sustaining. And that happens through the playing of a role. God brought Adam and Eve together, but things went haywire because they didn't do their part. So we have to play our part. Uh, in the relationship in order for it to work. Those are my two ways from that. That's good, and I like that because we know that what God ordains, he sustains. Yes. We are co yeah. with, with him, but what yes. he ordains, he also sustains. And yes. that's good. I am so thankful for this time of conversation. This has been amazing. Now, y'all y'all heard them. We're going to do part two. We're going we gonna to hit y'all up with part two. This has been really, really good. And any additional questions that you all um, would like to ask for part two, go ahead and hit my inbox, either at Lynn Denise Experience or on my personal page, uh, Lynn Johnson, or you can find me on Periscope at Lynn Denise. Now I want Pastor Josh, Dr. Tuesday, and Bishop uh, Woods to let us know where they can be found. Um, somebody might need some inbox ministry. They It was a couple of people putting in appointment times in the comments, Dr. Tuesday. Amen. So let, let, let the people know where they can find you at. <laughs> Um, anywhere on social media, uh, Tuesday Tater, Dr. Tuesday. My website is drtuesday.net, drtuesday.net. Um, and you can get the books there as well, as well if you, as you want to contact me for coaching, relationship, business coaching, spiritual coaching. Uh, we do that as well as training uh, for if you have ministry, like leadership training, we do that as well. Um, so Things that are coming up, I will be starting um, a podcast uh, on relationships specifically. So uh, it'll be a little bit later. And then we'll also be coaching 
online as well. So we have some great things coming up. Planning my men's conference, Pastor Bishop. All right. Um, All right. Yeah. So we at our women men's conference, the women do nothing. We only serve. We are not in any workshops. I'm just the visionary that he births it through. And um, the first one we did was amazingly successful. And the men keep constantly asking, when are we going to do another one? So um, we're planning that. So uh, just believing God for the reset that he's doing in 2020. God's vision, though ours may be waiting, it has an appointed time. But God's vision for this year is still 2020 vision. Come on. So don't get yeah. what we're seeing going on around us twisted. Oh, I can't wait till 2020 leaves. No, you better hold on to 2020 because God's vision for this land is going to come to pass. He's just doing a reset. Yes. So drtuesday.net, hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Bishop. Uh, really quick, uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at Pastor Jonathan Woods Sr. Pastor Jonathan Woods Sr. on Instagram. You can also follow me on Facebook on my ministry page at Overseer Jonathan L. Woods Sr. on my ministry page. Or you can friend me on Facebook if I have any friends available. That's uh, Jonathan L. Woods Sr. Uh, as well. And uh, we love to uh, be a blessing to you. Or you can follow our church page, All Nations Church Fairfield, uh, just for an inspirational word. If you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you uh, at All Nations. Uh, and you can follow us there as well. I'm sorry. Can I say one thing, sis? My personal yes. like Bishop, is, is a little over the number. So on my ministry page, <laughs> Yeah, T Tape Ministries uh, is my ministry page, so um, you can always follow me there as well. Wonderful! Come on, Pastor Josh. Hey, Amen. Look, this this has been wonderful. Real quickly, awesome. we got some awesome co- people in them comments. Listen, did we need that? Yes, interview we too. did. Yes. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. Uh, I, listen, Justin, y'all been having me laugh. I've been looking at these comments. They yes. been killing me. <laughs> Waffle House, Applebee's, refreshments. Uh, but listen. I love the it. I love ministry, it. Listen, the side. Listen, yeah, listen, listen, <laughs> y'all been wonderful. Oh, no. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. I love, listen, listen, I have been entertained, not just from the conversation, but listen, there's some anointing in that uh, in that, uh comment. In that uh, comment box. In that comment box. <laughs> um, 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 I can be, um, I can be reached um, um, uh, um, personally from uh, Facebook, my ministry page. Uh, I believe I may or uh, may not like Bishop have any uh, some spaces available for my personal um, page. My personal page is Joshua Bingham. Just my name. You'll see me there. My ministry page is Joshua Bingham Ministries. Um, you, I can you, I can be um, found on Instagram at Bingamology. So that's B I N G H A M O L O G Y underscore. So Bingamology underscore. Um, on Instagram and on Twitter, I am Bingamology. Just one word at Bingamology. You'll find me there. Um, uh, and we just, I just love being here. I, lo- I love, I love doing Wonderful. what we did. And we got to, we have to do part two. Have yes. to do part two. Oh, yes. That is absolutely Excellent. necessary. And I'm we so thankful for everybody. We applaud. You. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. You did a great I'm job. So like, great job. All of you all did. <laughs> Lynn, all I of want to all thank you for you. Oh, thank, thank you, Bishop. For, thank you for allowing us to, to be on your platform. Yes. And uh, thank you for being amazing. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that tuned in tonight. We are going to do a part two. Again, you can reach me on this page right here, our Lynn Denise Experience on uh, Periscope, it's at Lynn Denise, and on Instagram, it is, again, at Lynn Denise. Thank you all for joining us for Candid Christian Conversations. I believe that God has had his say (laughs) in this relaunch, and I'm so excited. I can't wait for part two. We'll be letting you all know. Until then, uh, before we sign off, I just want to um, give a word of encouragement to everyone that is watching. I know that we are in a place right now where uh, everything looks grim. We don't know what the future holds, uh, not just the pandemic, but 
the the racial pandemic that we have faced. Um, and I just want you all to uh, be encouraged and to never let go of God's unchanging hand. Everything in this world can change, but God and his word will never change. And as Dr. Tuesday has already told us, we might be in the sixth month of 2020, but the year is not over and God has not changed his mind regarding no. you, regarding your future and regarding his plans for you in this season. So thank you again for watching. We are signing off. God bless you. And we will see you on the next Candid Christian Conversations. God bless. Bye, God everybody. Bless Amen. <laughs> Good night. Wonderful. Good night. Serving with you.